time and with his gifts. Um, I remember one time he provided some backstage passes for me and my oldest son to go to a kind of a big country show that they were putting on in the South Florida area. That show management was kind of doing the infrastructure for that. I'm not sure if that was exactly kosher, so if there's any show management people around, I'm trying to get in trouble. <laughs> uh, but that was very cool. It was just a cool thing for me and my son to be able to do. And, and there were some names there. You know, Charlie Daniels was there. And, and this was maybe 10 years ago. And, uh, Keith Urban was there before he was Keith Urban. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see him. And I was, you know, right there. So that was very cool. Scotty was that kind of guy, always looking out for somebody else. And, and uh, providing and making sure that everybody was taken care of. Got to baptize Anna, part of our time there at Confident Beach, and that was a special time, a special uh, honor for me to be able to do that. Scotty was a lifelong learner and a teacher at times. One thing that he taught me that I'll never forget had to do with electricity. As you know, Scotty was an electrician, so uh, when he had an opportunity to tell you something about it, he, he would. And he told me that when you reach out for a wire, there's always that possibility it can still be a hot wire. So never approach it this way. Always approach it this way. So that if it was still hot and exact, you knew your reaction was going to be to go like that. If you approach it that way, you grab onto that wire, and this way you've got a lot better chance of surviving. And in our productions at First Baptist Pompano, we had more than a few reasons <laughs> to approach the wire with the back of our hands. But Scotty kept us safe through much of that. I mentioned that Scotty was a lifelong learner. He had a notebook that he kept his work things, uh, notes from work, and some of his own sayings that he didn't want to forget. Things like, never let your gas go below half a tank. Seems like that'd be something you'd remember, but Scotty wrote it down. <laughs> he also filled his notebook with scriptures. Presumably these were passages that he was encouraged or challenged by. Maybe he was working on committing these passages to memory. <coughs> Scripture was important to Scotty. His faith was important to him. And whether it was whether Scotty was outgoing with his faith or not, he surely demonstrated it. His convictions were strong and ran deep. If Scotty could stand here in this place right now, in my, in my place, there's three things that Scotty would want you to know. The first is that he'd want you to know that God is real. Yeah. The second thing that he'd want you to know that eternity is real. The last thing he want you to know is that the time to make a decision about God and eternity is right now. Amen. Just a couple of days ago, we heard from Carolyn about Scotty's sudden passing. I googled Scotty Klein to see what the internet knew about our friend. I came across a YouTube video called Clint Rocket. And I figured that must be our sky because it is more fun. And so I checked it out. 42 seconds long. The video shows a rocket that Clint had presumably put together and they were getting ready for the launch. I could hear some other voices on the video, but Clint provided the countdown. Scotty, the play-by-play. -play. The launch was a success. At one point, while Scotty's camera was trained squarely on the rocket, way up in the sky, you can hear Scotty say, I can't see it. But then the parachute came out for the descent. And Scotty said, parachute deploy. Clint chimed in with the same. Just over half a minute of time, documented of a dad playing with his boy. The video itself is just neat to watch. But what really gripped me was what I saw when the video ended. A note from YouTube that said video upload one week ago. Just like your heart.
heart did just now. Mine jumped up into control. <coughs> One week, <coughs> playing with the family. Next week, gone. Some would say it's a blessing not to know. Others would say we needed more time to process and to say the things that we needed to say. Still others would question the justice in such an event. There's a story in the Bible that addresses some of the things that we're feeling today, and it's found in the Gospel of John, in the 11th chapter. And here we read about a funeral that involves some hard questions, some deep feelings, and budding hope. The deceased was a man named Lazarus. Like Scotty, he comes from a close family. Among them are two sisters, Mary and Martha. And also, like Scotty, he had a bunch of friends. And one of his best friends was Jesus. Jesus arrives on the scene four days after Lazarus dies. And as he approaches the house full of people crying, both sisters run out to him at separate times and say, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. I suspect that this morning some of you are asking if questions as well. If questions come in handy right about now to occupy our time and our thoughts. If only I'd spent more time. If only I'd been nicer. If only I hadn't argued with him. If only I told him I loved him. If only I had called him. If only I'd done this or that. These kinds of if questions are normal. Not healthy, and they're not right. You are not to blame. Well, if we're not supposed to blame ourselves, then maybe God is to blame for this. That's precisely the implication that Mary and Martha uh, make when they're grieving over the death of their brother. Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Now, there's no sense in either accusing God or trying to defend him. The Bible tells us that God's ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. God's views come from a place that we can only imagine. We don't see the biggest picture in all of this. It's like when Clint shot off his rocket, and when he got way up there, Scotty said, I can't see it. That might be our reaction to this tragedy. I can't see it, God. God sees it. He sees all of it. He sees how all of this fits together. And we may never understand it completely on this side of heaven. But know also that it's not sinful to question him. Some are wondering why God would allow this to happen. It's okay for you to ask these kinds of questions. Jesus doesn't scold the sisters for suggesting that perhaps their brother's death was his fault. You shouldn't feel guilty for wondering if there was something that God could have done. In fact, God could have kept Scotty from dying. But for some reason, he didn't. It was Scotty's time. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we're reminded that there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. And while we don't understand why Scotty died, we don't know it was his time. As we continue with the story, we find the shortest verse of the entire Bible. Surrounded by family and friends, Jesus is deeply moved and asks where the body of Lazarus is. When he views Lazarus, he could, he could have said something extremely profound. But instead, verse 35 tells us what Jesus did. He wept. Here's Jesus of Nazareth. The most complete, most perfect man, creator of the universe, attending the funeral of a friend and openly weeping, without embarrassment, without apology. In fact, those who were watching him said, see how much he loved him. And if you feel like crying today, don't hold back. Yeah. Scotty doesn't want us to. <coughs> but we need to go through that process. If it's okay for Jesus to cry, it's okay for you to cry. Yeah. God feels your pain. He wants you to let it out. He wants you to let him in. He wants to help you work through everything that you're feeling. He wants
wants to be a part of your life. God knows what it's like to hurt. One day, he lost a family member too. The one and only son, Jesus. Back to our story. Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, will live even though he dies. Do you believe this? We often think that this is the land of the living, and that when we die, we go to the land of the dead. The opposite is true. This is the land of the dying. When our life here is over, we're transferred into the land of the living, and herein lies the potential problem. Scotty wants you to know that God is real, and eternity is real. Eternity is a long time. It's, well, eternal. And when we change neighborhoods from the land of the dying to the land of the living, there are two possible destinations. Eternal joy or eternal torment. You may know them as heaven and hell. The default is hell. That's our destiny. You may think that to be narrow-minded or intolerant, but your argument is not with me. You may think that to be unjust or unmerciful, but it's what we deserve. But here is where what we call the good news comes in. God has made a way to change our default destiny. There's only one requirement to change our destiny. It's not a matter of trying to be good or even going to church. It's not a matter of trying to be a good person and to do the right things. The only requirement is that you personally believe that Jesus exchanged his life for yours by taking your sins on the cross. That he died on that cross and that God raised him up from the dead. And when you believe that, you're going to want to say, Jesus is Lord. Amen. When you say Jesus is Lord, the Bible says that you're clothed in Christ. You are wrapped up in Christ. When God looks at you, he sees Christ. What used to look like sin now looks like Christ. When you say Jesus is Lord, you just changed your destiny. It's no longer hell for eternity. It's heaven. You just strapped on the ultimate parachute. When it's time for you to pass from the land of the dying to the land of the living, you can say, parachute. You ready to do some spiritual business with God today? You can leave this place the same way. You can leave here trying to be good, a religious person with vague hopes of heaven, or you can leave here in full assurance that you will go to heaven when you die. The choice is up to you. In the book of James we read, what is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Scotty was not planning to die when he did. Really, none of us knows when or how we'll die either. Our lives are very fragile. Life is unpredictable. We don't even know what will happen tonight, much less next week or next year. The truth is that no one can predict the future. Life is brief. Our lives are like a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Our lives are like vapor in the grand scheme of things. Life is too unpredictable and too brief to live it without God at the center. We count our lives in years, but God tells us in the Psalms to number our days. The truth of the matter is that all of us are just one heartbeat away from eternity. So Scotty wants you to know that God is real. That eternity is real and the time to make a decision about God and eternity is right now. Here one man, gone the next day. Don't put off the decision. Decide today to give your life to Jesus. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. Don't waste another minute of the only life you have. Right now, right here, decide to pin all your hopes on Jesus Christ and him alone who exchanged his life for you, who in the next
next life will greet you on the other side. And that's the greeting that Scotty received on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, well done, good and faithful servant. Scotty, parachute forward, my friend. Parachute 